one of Russia's most active volcanoes has erupted, shooting a vast cloud of ash far up into the skies. The world may have gotten used to the eruptions of the Shivalich volcano, but nothing prepared us for the events on April 9, 2023, when one of the volcano's largest eruptions hit the Earth. It is already a sorry situation for the communities around this deadly hotspot, but the volcano doesn't seem to be done yet. What does it mean and what should we be expecting from this? Keep watching to find out. No matter how often you're told, it is very challenging to grasp what living around a very active hotspot means. But if you're wondering what a volcano that frequently erupts looks like, you should check out the Shivalich Volcano. The Shivalich Volcano, also known as Shivalich, is one of the most active and largest volcanoes in the Kamchatka Peninsula of eastern Russia. It is in the northern part of the peninsula, near Klyuchy, and is part of the Klyuchevskaya Volcanic Group. The volcano has three main structures, the old Shivalich volcano and the ancient caldera, alongside the active young Shivalich volcano. At first glance, the first detail of the volcano, which should register fear in the onlooker, is its size. The volcano stands an impressive height of 3,283 meters, 10,771 feet above sea level, making it the third highest active volcano in Kamchatka. It has a steep conical shape with a prominent crater at the summit, approximately 1.5 kilometers, 0.93 miles wide. But its size is only some of what there is, as Shivalich also has a long history of eruptions, with the earliest known eruption occurring over 10,000 years ago. Let us be more precise here. The earliest known Shivalich volcanic eruption was the Holocene epoch, which occurred about 11,700 years ago. Inspired by this eruption and many others, the Shilavish volcano is deemed to be the most single explosive volcano on the planet. And this, of course, makes sense when you count the number of eruptions produced on the same magnitude as that of the 1980 eruption on Mount St. Helens. The Shilavish volcano has surprisingly been able to produce about 15 eruptions with the same magnitude level in the course of history, which is known to man. As time went by, the volcano has been erupting more often since 1999, and it is considered one of the most active and dangerous volcanoes in the region. The eruptions of the Shilavish volcano are characterized by explosive activity, which produces pyroclastic flows, ash plumes, and lava flows. These eruptions can and have posed a significant threat to nearby regional populations. Even aviation suffers from the eruptions of this volcano, as its ash plumes can reach high altitudes and disrupt air traffic. In addition to the immediate hazards of volcanic eruptions, the ongoing activity of the Shivalish volcano is becoming more impactful in the long term. We say this because it has also led to the formation of a large dome at the summit, which can collapse and generate large landslides. These landslides can trigger secondary hazards such as tsunamis, affecting the coastal areas even more. From a historical viewpoint, the ongoing activity of the Shivalich volcano makes it dangerous and unpredictable. However, since the 1960s, the volcano has shown signs of increased activity with frequent explosions, ash emissions, and lava flows. The most recent major eruption occurred in 2017, when a large ash plume rose to the altitude of approximately 10 kilometers, 33,000 feet above sea level. Little did we know that the Earth was warming up when this happened. It was, in other words, just a preamble of what was to come. Now, let us talk about the new dilemma of April 9, 2023. Everyone must have been sleeping when the awful incident happened around 1.35 a.m. local time. This was the most powerful and impactful eruption seen in 30 years. The unusual size of the plume of ash that has resulted from this incident speaks volumes and would scare anyone who dares to stare. According to the reports, the lava dome exploded, shooting up plumes of ash to an unbelievable height of about 54,000 feet, equivalent to 16.5 kilometers. This had formed a congregation of a new sky made of ash. The result of the congregation of ash in the sky was a rapid succession of lightning that marked the region's dangers. The only color the region's sky could give at the moment was pure gray. Nothing had prepared the region for the severity of the eruptions, which had lasted strongly for at least six hours. 
only after this expanse of time did the eruption gradually reduce intensity before normalizing completely later. Here, the scene footage shows the gray ash drifting to the west and piling up in a 10 centimeter thick formation. We don't want to imagine how breathing in such ash could affect residents. It is scientifically proven that breathing in volcanic ash can have severe adverse health effects, and it is generally considered hazardous to human health. Volcanic ash can irritate the respiratory tract and cause breathing difficulties, especially for people with pre-existing respiratory conditions such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD. The ash particles can penetrate the lungs and cause inflammation, leading to coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. To make things worse, volcanic ash can also cause irritation and damage to the eyes. When the ash particles come into contact with the eyes, they can cause inflammation, redness, and itching. Following this, the ash can also cause skin irritation and damage, and the fine particles can cause abrasions and scratches, leading to irritation and infection. This is because volcanic ash can contain toxic substances such as sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, and heavy metals. Breathing in these substances can lead to poisoning and other health problems. All these show the immense danger the region's people were in, with so many ash plumes hanging over them. No area of the sky was spared from the brown poison. The authorities had to advise local residents to stay indoors to avoid being harmed by the poisonous ash plumes. The eruption was said to have covered a large area of about 108,000 square kilometers, so even nearby villages and communities were not spared from the wrath of the eruption. Their hands could be covered with a series of gray ash that was as deep as 8.5 centimeters. It might interest you to know that this was the deepest land invasion of ash in at least 16 years. Following the incidents, social institutions and schools were affected and closed due to the ash that had taken over the atmosphere. In truth, the number of eruptions that frequently takes place in the Shilavuch volcano wouldn't have been so impactful if they happened just once in a while. But it's frequently putting residents around this region in a really bad condition. According to the Institute of Volcanology and Seismology in the Eastern Region, this recent eruption quickly became the largest eruption in history. This is surprisingly given that we are already used to having the highest form of disasters happening in prehistoric times. So many questions are stirred up from this incident. Why is this volcanic eruption different? Should we expect bigger eruptions following this? You will find the answers if you keep watching. However, we must remember that the Shivalish volcano is considered one of Russia's most active volcanoes, with its least number of known eruptions counted to be about 60 in the past. Yet more than dangers of the zone is needed to keep tourists away from the site. But how had an eruption this large come to be? Before this eruption had taken place, Early warning signs of a near-future major explosive eruption had been given on November 22, 2022 by an Arizonan geologist. At that time, the Shivalish volcano had already started erupting, but it soon saw an increase in thermal signals visible from the satellites. The signal had shown that a new large gas-rich body of magma had been intruding into the volcano. But surprisingly, the signal had returned to a normal level in later times. Geologists, therefore, believed that the highly volatile, gas-rich, shallow body of magma was still present in the hotspot, but was trapped under the 1,000 feet thick viscous lava dome. This trapped magma had continued building up over a time frame of about six months before eventually breaking the overlying rock, causing the eruption that had taken place on April 9th. Scientists, therefore, say that a small section of the primary lava dome should be missing due to this eruption, with a possible new hundreds of meters wide explosion crater carved into it. Now, how dangerous is the Shivalush volcano in the first place? On tour, to have a personal view of the volcano's activities, you would be shocked to be welcomed by its huge flora and fauna, including arctic foxes, brown bears, and various rare plant species adapted to the harsh volcanic environment. But make no mistake, Shivalish has earned itself the title of a highly hazardous volcano due to its frequent explosive eruptions and the potential for ash plumes to disrupt air travel. In this light, the volcano has been assigned the highest red aviation hazard code, 
This is probably why the area around the volcano is monitored closely by the Kamchatka Volcanic Eruption Response Team KVERT, who regularly updates its activity to local authorities and the aviation industry. But just how dangerous is the volcano right now? Will an eruption this big, or even bigger, happen in this hotspot in the near future? While only the Russian government is authorized to make evacuation orders, geologists have insights into the situation and how dangerous the volcano is. Following a series of studies, an Arizona geologist opines and advises that the dangers of the volcano currently do not permit people to be within a 15-kilometer radius of the hotspot in some directions. However, this limit expands to 35 kilometers, between 192 to 339 degrees if straight east represents 0 degrees and north represents 90 degrees. There is a reason for this, so stay put as we explain. To explain the dangers of this volcano, its structure comes into view. If you observe the volcanic structure, you will find that it has two large collapsible scars. Both scars are opened in the south and south-southwest, respectively. According to the geologist, in case of another major eruption, the pyroclastic flows which would be generated would mostly flow within the confines of the two collapsed scars. Hence, in cases of large pyroclastic flows, some of these flows are expected to spill over to other areas. However, these spillages will likely travel below the 15-kilometer radius limit. The pyroclastic flows, lateral blast deposits, and large debris avalanches caused by the sections of volcanic collapse are already found to have reached the 34-kilometer distance during at least one eruption ever since the last ice age. This could be seen by observing the numerous rounded hills which seem to be out of place around the southern flanks of the volcano. These hills are regarded as the hummocky terrain, signs of a debris avalanche that had occurred at least once in history. Following this, geologists affirm that it is currently unlikely for any eruption or volcanic activity in the next week to reach the 35-kilometer limit. However, this limit is deemed the safest radius in case of a worst-case scenario eruption. Will another major eruption be as large as this one, or is this the region's best? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more.